Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm going to be continuing with my series of lectures on the theories of smell. Now, in the last two lectures, we talked about the molecular structure theory of smell and the vibrational theory of smell, and today we'll be talking about the combinatorial ototope theory. Uh, I show this chart here, which is a little complicated. It was developed by James Kennedy in Australia to show you the range of odorants you detect from a whole range of different chemical compounds. Uh, the column on the left, going vertically from the top, is from one carbon up to 14 carbons, in other words, increasing the chain length. And the uh, horizontal column shows the different functional groups and how it affects aroma and smell. We have the hydroxyl group, the carbonyl group, the carboxyl group, the thiol group, and the amine groups. And you can see as you increase the chain length, uh, generally you change the character of the smell and particularly with the functional group. And it just gives you an idea of the uh, complexity of developing a, a, a theory of smell or a model for the theory of smell. I've similarly shown this for a series of uh, ester compounds, which generally are quite pleasant. An ester is formed from an alcohol and an acid. And along the left-hand left column, we have a series of uh, longer chain uh, acid structures, the, the carbon chain on the acid from the top to the bottom, increasing as it goes down. And for the alcohol, increasing the chain length from the left to the right. And again, you can see how changing this uh, length of these chain lengths of these different alcohol and acid components of the ester uh, dramatically influences the aroma. We have aromas from a pineapple, apple uh, in the center. We have balsamic vinegar aromas, coconut, and even the floral scents. So you can see again how complex it is uh, to develop a theory of smell based on these just these small changes in some cases in the structure of a molecule. So let's look at some alternate theories. Uh, the combinatorial ototope theory, and the swipe card theory. And let's look at the swipe card theory first. This was developed by Jennifer Brooks and her colleagues at the University College in London. And it uh, basically works like a hotel uh, key card. Uh, the s size or the shape of the uh, molecule must be able to fit into the receptor, but once it fits in, it transfers its message through a vibration. And uh, it's, it's basically relates a strong mixing of electronic and vibrational states, which of course are both affected by molecular structure, but it's a compromise between geometrical shape factors for fitting into the receptor and uh, the right energetic factors, the vibrational factors for commuting the uh, sense of smell. And it's a one way of looking at it uh, as a combination of the two theories of smell. But today I want to emphasize this combinatorial ototope theory, which I think is the best theory of smell to date. And it was developed by Linda Buck and her colleagues. Uh, and I remember that Linda Buck uh, received the Nobel Prize in 2004 her, for her uh, design of the olfactory receptor, the G-protein olfactory receptors, which she uh, defined. Uh, what they did in further work was expose uh, series of mouse olfactory receptors to a range of odorants and then they used imaging te techniques to detect uh, which of these receptors were uh, stimulated by a particular odor. What they found is that the olfactory receptors were not tuned to specific odorants and that the odorant signal to the brain uh, constitutes a pattern of firing across a range of different receptors in a combinatorial fashion. And this is simply illustrated below for example, if the odorant uh, at the top are fitting into the receptors below, odorant number one would uh, certainly just fit into the one receptor A. But if you had odorant number five, it would fit into receptor A plus receptor B. Uh, similarly, uh, odorant number six would fit into receptor uh, B and receptor C, so in a combinatorial fashion. So these are some of the results uh, of, from uh, Buck and her colleagues of working with the uh, odor receptors from mice, and it's a recognition properties of the odorant receptors. Uh, the size of the circles represents the response intensity. So let's look at uh, the, the alcohols and the acids, the two top categories. And the alcohols are, are ranging from, a, I think it's a five carbon alcohol to a nine carbon alcohol. 
And uh, you can see for the lower chains, you get one small intense uh, response, one small intensity response for a number three receptor. But as you increase the chain length of the alcohol, you can see an increasing number of the receptors are stimulated. Uh, similarly, for the acids, as the chain length is increased, you tend to have more of the receptors stimulating. So each organ, uh, uh, olfactor receptor can recognize multiple odorants, and each odorant can be detected by multiple different odorant receptors. And different odorants are recognized by the different combinations of the odorants. Now this coding, coding scheme allows for discrimination of almost an unlimited number of odorants uh, based on the number of receptors. And only three odorant receptors could generate almost a billion different codes. So I think this is a, a great way of, uh, of perceiving uh, the odorants and how, uh, a great model. Uh, it explains why changing the structure of odor even slightly can alter the perceived odor. Now, uh, this is some work that was done in France. In other words, uh, uh, it, it kind of verifies the work done by uh, Buck and others with the mice odor receptors. In this case, a human panel was allowed to detect the, uh, define the odors they smelled in a series of, of compound cones, compounds of different uh, odor, uh, molecular complexity, uh, from furan with an odor complexity of about 23 to acetoeugenol. Uh, and these uh, molecular complexities were developed uh, as a, equations to based on the diversity of atoms, the symmetry, and the bond connectivity of the different molecules. And then the, the panel uh, rated uh, or gave responses of the number of different uh, order profiles for each of these different, uh, different compounds. And you can see for the very simplest compound, furan, there was four different uh, perceived odors, uh, or three different rather, spicy, smoky, and cinnamon. And as the complexity got larger and larger, you can see it went up to two, four, six, seven different uh, odors detected. Sweet, spicy, fruity, earthy, balsamic, leafy, and floral for the most complex structure. And this uh, goes, fits very nicely with Buck's work saying that additional odorant receptors were stimulated by more complicated or longer chain molecules. Okay, uh, before I, I, I finish, I would like to mention that or recently uh, it's been uh, published that there, are, there can be medical uses uh, for odor. Um, the ancient Greek and Chinese medical practitioners utilized scent to make diagnosis of diseases, uh, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago. Uh, modern, our modern medical research actually confirms this, and uh, the, the smell of the skin, or the breath, or bodily fluids can su suggest an illness. For example, uh, with diabetics, their breath can smell of rotten apples, and typhoid patients, their skin can smell of ba uh, baking breads. So researchers have developed a, what are called smelling machines, and basically they're putting molecular receptors on gold nanoparticles and detecting uh, what type of scent is coming off. And this can be, have very great implications for early detection of cancers, uh, uh, ovarian and colorectal cancers, as well as irritable bowel syndromes, and I think it'll be applied to uh, further types of uh, mal maladies in the future. So let me make some conclusions now and summarize what we've uh, talked about in these, this series of lectures on the theories of smell. Essential oils and perfumes have a strong effect on our emotions, health, health and awareness. Smell has implications way beyond the pleasant effects of perfume taste and having warning signs uh, into the realms of de medical detection of cancers, as I just mentioned. The mechanism of smell is quite complex, involves aspects of molecular st structure, and there may be some uh, vibrational contributions. The best theory of smell to date, though, as I feel, is this combinatorial ototope uh, theory. Uh, the coding system involving multiple receptors. Each type of receptor responds to a, a variety uh, of odorants and molecules, and each odorant molecule interacts with a variety of receptor types. Thank you very much.